This video is sponsored by Cotton Camera Carrying Systems. Hello friends, welcome to the woods. Raymond and I are out with some cameras right now. We are in Northern Arizona. To be specific, right now we are at the Watchable Wildlife Trail just outside of Flagstaff. We have beautiful views of a couple of peaks, which I'll show you in a minute. But uh, I just really have been itching to get out with my camera. Um, I have not gone this long without getting out with my camera for a long time. Uh, the last several videos I've made probably more than several. I have been going into our photo archives to, you know, share stuff from, from those. And that's great because I've been able to relive some of those memories, but my shutter release finger is itchy. So we needed to come out and I needed to scratch that itch. Today I am hoping to capture some wildlife, hence the big lens. But I do have another setup in my camera bag that's on the ground at my feet and I'll show you that in just a minute. But I just wanted to share some of the photos and videos from today's outing, some of the outings tomorrow. It's actually nearing sunset, so we got to get going here. But uh, the setup that I'm using right now is the Nikon Z9. I have the 200 to 500 millimeter f5.6 lens. It's an F mount lens, so I'm using the FTZ2 adapter. Let's ask what Raymond is shooting with today. I am shooting with the holiest of holiest film bodies the Nikon F6. I got some Tri-X 400 in here. It's a beautiful Tri-X day. Lee's got me all tethered in here on the cotton, <laughs> uh, cotton carrier. Quick to put on, quick to get off. And I'm having some fun with this. I'm gonna do a little shooting with the Z7 so I can look at the pictures today. <laughs> but, uh, but this is, you said you were scratching an itch. This is scratching an itch for me today with these mixed weather conditions, kind of dreary one minute, kind of sunny, late afternoon, pre-golden hour the next minute. I'm liking this. This is good. It's a mm -hmm. good time. What lens do you have on there? This is the 24 to 70 old school F-mount G lens. No VR, just zoom, autofocus of course with the F6 and I'm firing away. We had the Nikon Z7 and the 35mm f1.8s lens capturing images for a time lapse of the San Francisco peaks with the amazing clouds that are moving through. I will show you that in a few minutes. Well, we've been out here for, I don't know, a little while and I've got a time lapse, you know, it's clicking away. Um, I'm wandering around because I've seen zero wildlife. Not zero. I've seen a couple of little birds kind of flitting around way up high in the trees. Um, but you know, just because it's called the Watchable Wildlife Trail doesn't mean that you're always going to hit a home run. <laughs> it is really windy right now. There's a wind advisory there has been all day. Uh, animals just might be kind of hunkering down and you know, that's okay. I still feel really good about being out here. You know, even though I'm not getting to use my, my shutter finger all that much, um, it's nice to at least have a camera in my hands, which I don't actually have. Well, I mean, I'm, ca I'm holding the camera that I'm, I'm filming with, but like, I'm not even, <laughs> I'm not actually holding my camera because it's in the harness. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> what a great, what a great segue. Um, <laughs> I am actually really, really impressed with this. I'm really, I'm really glad that I finally tried it. Um, let me set this camera down so I can talk a little bit about uh, Cotton and, and why I decided to take them as a sponsor and why I decided to finally try them. I have had so many viewers over the years recommend camera carrying systems like this, in particular Cotton camera carrying systems. And I cannot believe it took me this long. I am amazed at how easy it is to carry something like this big setup. And I am going to be carrying 
my big telephoto lens setup, my wildlife setup, so much more often on so many more outings than I did before. Because before, you know, it was fine. I would I would carry my uh, my camera and, you know, I would get through it. But I'm feeling like I can take this on much longer and more difficult hikes now. And that really excites me. So, you know, I realize this video is sponsored by Cotton, but you know, in case you're new here, I don't take sponsors lightly. I only take them if I'm actually into it, if I'm excited about the product and it's something that I use or I think it's something that you all will use. And judging by the number of people who've recommended these over the years, many of you are already using them, but if you haven't tried them, it really is, I was gonna say a better way. I'm not gonna say it's a better way. Everybody has their own thing, but for me, it's a better way. And I know I've, I've mostly talked about this, uh, the big harness so far, but the smaller uh, Scout that Raymond was wearing tonight is also incredible. I've carried that around a little bit and it's like, it's just, it's the same thing. It's hands-free. I don't have my camera bouncing on my belly or like bouncing up against my hip bone, which is what would always happen when I had my camera on a strap crossbody on a hike. And I would end up bruised on my, over my hip bone. And um, I don't have that anymore. And another thing where I'm really excited about that scout strap, and I've not used it for this yet, but uh, biking. So I probably won't wear one of my fancy cameras out when I'm on like a really hard and rocky mountain bike ride. But if I'm on kind of a leisurely mountain bike ride, which happens quite often, um, I'm gonna be able to have my camera out. And that's really exciting because instead of having it in a bag where I have to get off my bike, I have to take my camera backpack off, and then I have to you know, get the camera out, it's gonna be out and ready. And that just means I'm gonna be able to take more pictures when I'm out and about. And that's so exciting to me. So anyway, I think what that that's what this all boils down to for me is that I'm going to be able to take my camera with me more places and comfortably take my camera with me more places. I mean, I'm sitting here squatting on the ground and truly it's, there's weight here, but it's just, it's just not a big deal. I'm lucky to be choosy about who I partner with. I've been talking about how much I like the product, but what drew me to the cotton camera carriers over any other carrying system is that they are a small family run business. Running a small business myself, I know how difficult it is and that you have to have a passion for what you do. And on top of that, they are trying to be as environmentally friendly as possible, like by limiting plastic in their packaging, which is something that speaks to me, a company that's trying to help. These things make me feel like their company ethos aligns with mine, which is ultimately what led me to choose to partner with them. I will add a link to cottoncarrier.com in the description of this video if you want to learn more about them. All right, back to the trails. Any luck? No, I mean, I got like a couple pictures of clouds and a flower, but <laughs> all the wildlife is hiding from me today, but that's all right. Here, let me take this. I have a question for you, Raymond. Okay. My question for you is, what about you? What have you been capturing? And I really, the question, sorry, I forgot what my question was there for a second. My question is, what do you look for in a black and white photo? Like when you're taking pictures of things and like you're using monochrome film, what do you look for in the photo? I'm looking for everything. So I like my particular style with black and white is actually low contrast. Even though Tri-X can be a high contrast film, I like the... I like the dreariness, and there's been some of that today, as I mentioned earlier. And then I like the high contrast as well, and the film handles that very well. In fact, it's just about sunset. The sun's peeking through right now, so there's a lot of contrast. So I wanna get over there, and I also wanna try to steal your Z9 with the 14 to 30 ultra wide Z lens. And I wanna do some work with that, since it sounds like you're not having much luck with the wildlife. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll hand over. If I hand over the Z9 with the 14 to 30, do I get to use the F6? In a minute, yes. <laughs> I'll be All back right. over. Okay, I have my phone. I have this uh, ZV1, right? All right. 
I guess I gotta, I gotta relinquish the big setup. Don't worry, I'll be back at it with the super telephoto to try to capture some ospreys and who knows what else. There's an osprey nest that should have inhabitants this time of year, so we'll head there in the morning. For tonight, Raymond did run around and capture all sorts of beautiful cloud photos with that 14 to 30 millimeter f4 lens on the Z9 while I was talking to a very nice young photographer that is new to the area. He also wanted to capture the San Francisco peaks and those unreal cloud formations at sunset. And while we chatted, this is the time lapse that Raymond put together with the photos that the Z7 captured. I love to see how the clouds transform and dissipate around those very high mountain peaks. The San Francisco peaks are the remains of a volcano that erupted hundreds of thousands of years ago, and one of those peaks is Humphreys Peak, which is the highest point in Arizona. Oh my gosh, y'all, we just came out, we came out late today and we thought we're not gonna probably get anything and there's a bald eagle. So all of the, we didn't get anything yesterday has been made up for right now because there's a bald eagle and ospreys here. Oh look, the ospreys are up there too, wow. flying. I'm just waiting for him to take off. I'm sure he's hunting the prairie dogs that are in the, uh, in the field behind us. And those prairie dogs are adorable. I did capture a few photos of them before seeing the eagle, but on to the main show of the day. I spotted the eagle perched in this tree as we were about to start hiking. We ended up just walking down the road to get closer. I captured a few photos every so often along the way, just in case he took off. This is the best vantage point and the closest I have been to a bald eagle for photos. I certainly still needed to crop the images, but I was amazed by how close he let us get to him. We were waiting for him to take off for a while, and as he sat there, his feathers blowing in the wind, I did wander around a little bit and try to get a variety of angles on him. He did fly around a few times, looking into the nearby lake and probably the field of prairie dogs for some breakfast, and he landed in different trees in between. He was actually hiding in a tree for a while, just hanging on to the branch that was bouncing around in the wind. In fact, it was so windy out that I had to use VR for this video, even though the lens was on a tripod. <laughs> even with me trying to stabilize the lens with my hands while it was on the tripod, it was still all over the place, so thank goodness for VR. Like I said last night, we were actually here to see ospreys and we did see a couple flying around and a couple of birds flew with the eagle as well. One of the ospreys did for a while, but this raven flew with the eagle for a long time. It was really neat to see them interact a little bit. I love ravens and I know how big the ravens are in Northern Arizona. So seeing how small this raven looks alongside the eagle really illustrates how large bald eagles are. And even though we were relatively close to that eagle, I was able to crop my images to bring us even closer. This is a time, however, that I wished that I had a prime lens. I do love the 200 to 500 millimeter that I was using, but a prime lens makes a huge difference in clarity and being able to crop more tightly and retain that clarity. Unfortunately, the new 400 millimeter prime for Z-mount, the one that has the built-in teleconverter, is not in my budget. <laughs> Maybe they'll release the uh, 200 to 600 millimeter that's on their roadmap soon. All right, I've tried to duck into some shade here. I handed off the camera finally to Raymond. Uh, we've been out here for long enough for me to start feeling like I'm getting a sunburn. <laughs> so uh, Eagle is flying around again and uh, I've gotten so many photo, hundreds of photos probably. What an amazing morning, considering that last night was such a disappointment. So anyway, got some prairie dogs, got some cool birds, getting my hair stuck in a tree. I'm gonna disentangle myself and um, we're gonna head out. So anyway, thank you again to Cotton for sponsoring this video. I'm sorry about the wind, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Uh, yeah, if, I didn't have this um, harness, I probably wouldn't have brought that camera out here today for a hike. And I did, and I was able to capture these amazing images. Thanks again, everybody. Um, I'll talk to you soon.